Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 22nd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we got some guidance from Microsoft now regarding the summer of SAM vulnerability. First of all, there's now a proper CVE number 2021. 36934 and Microsoft also published some help as to how to avoid this problem. First of all, of course, you need to adjust permissions for the affected directory. And uh, the important part is also the inheritance. So any files in that uh, system32 config directory will have the correct permissions. Apparently in 2018, Microsoft did publish a patch that prevented these files from being backed up insecurely. And as part of that patch, the permissions were altered or the inheritance part was altered on these directories, which then led to this vulnerability. All versions, Windows 10, 1809, that's the 2018 version, and later are affected, but Windows Server, again, not affected. Microsoft states as part of the knowledge base article that they're still investigating if other versions may be affected as well. And after you adjust the permissions, then you do need to delete any system restore points and shadow volumes from before you adjusted the permissions. Then of course, after you're done with that, create a new system restore point. So in case something goes back bad later, uh, you can at least uh, recover to the post uh, fix uh, restore point. Now there were some questions about what made this particular issue uh, such a big problem. In Linux, uh, we do have our shadow file. It's uh, similarly restricted in the sense that only root can access it. And that's where you typically uh, find uh, the hash, the system passwords. One of the issues with Windows is that hashing still well uses NTLM, essentially MD4. So uh, brute forcing or reversing uh, these hashes is much simpler than what you would find in a modern uh, Linux system. And Apple today published an update for Mac OS and iPad OS uh, completing the set of updates that started on Monday with the release of iOS 14.7 as well as updates for watch OS and uh, TV OS. With uh, these additional updates now, we uh, do have also a little bit details about the vulnerabilities that are being patched here. Nothing really overly exciting here. Of course, the one vulnerability as expected was the Wi-Fi vulnerability. So that was this uh, percent %s uh, format string issue. And yes, um, Apple does confirm that uh, this vulnerability could lead to code execution. So if you're joining a malicious uh, Wi-Fi network with one of these percent %s and uh, other format character uh, SSIDs, it may trigger this vulnerability. Certainly something that you do want to patch, but as I talked about uh, earlier in the week, uh, it only is triggered if you actually willingly join the particular Wi-Fi network. Only in very old versions of iOS or iPadOS would it be triggered without user interaction. As expected, there's a lot of overlap between these vulnerabilities. That's why uh, Apple always waits for all of the patches uh, to be released. One vulnerability sort of caught my eye and that's a Mac OS vulnerability that patches an issue that would allow code execution on the T2 chip. If you're not that familiar uh, with Apple, T2 is sort of that secure enclave that you find in modern Apple computers and it is in charge of, for example, disk encryption, also the fingerprint sensor and the like. And really serves as a root of trust for the system. So during the boot process and such, make sure that the system hasn't been tampered with. Not sure what you could accomplish with this uh, code execution on the T2 chip, but uh, certainly something that uh, maybe we'll hear about more uh, later. 
And yes, there are security updates for macOS Catalina and Mojave as well. These security updates are just the plain security updates, so they don't include any new features, unlike, of course, uh, Big Sur 11.5 will include security updates as well as a couple of new features. And sticking with Max here for another story, Checkpoint has a blog post uh, showing how Xloader, which uh, used to be known as Formbook, it's a malware family that's uh, commonly offered uh, for sale, is now being adapted to also work on Max. And apparently it's the same uh, binary that can either run on Windows or Max. Checkpoint has more details in their blog post. And one attractive feature of this malware is that it's really cheap, uh, starting at $29 a week or $100 for three months. And CISA published an advisory summarizing some of the malware they found on compromised Pulse Secure devices. Pulse Secure, of course, had a number of different vulnerabilities uh, these last couple of years. And uh, if you had a Pulse Secure device uh, exposed and uh, hadn't applied the patch uh, sort of right as it was released, double check uh, this uh, analysis that was published here. It's always really difficult to make sure that a device Device hasn't already uh, been uh, compromised by the time you patch it. Well, and the zip for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.